Hey everybody! I wanted to film a little video for you and I had to wait until it was quiet. I'm on vacation so uh, I don't know y'all may hear. Hold on, I will switch the uh, camera here in a second and you will probably recognize the view from my polywog, uh, the picture. <laughs> the picture of our polywog because we come to the same place every year to see my husband's family and uh, so, as you can imagine, it's been loud here. So, we are in Windy Hill in North Myrtle Beach. And, like I said, we come every year and have for a million years <laughs> to hang out with my husband's family. And uh, so, everybody has finally cleared off. And I had some time to do some knitting, and some spinning, and some reading, <laughs> which there's not been much time to do. Uh, I don't know. All my moms know how it goes when you go on vacation. And I think I saw some meme that was like, Nobody knows the false hope except of, like, a mom who packs, like, three books to go on vacation. Because, like, you think you're going to have all this time to, like, knit or spin or read or whatever. And then you end up spending most of your time applying sunblock and finding goggles and all of that sort of thing. But I have, I have been working, I have some projects I've been working on. And so I wanted to show them to you. First off, you can recognize the same balcony that you've seen some of my polywog spinning videos on, but there's the beach, if you were wondering. Um, so yeah, if you look at the listing for our polywog spinning wheel, you will see the exact same view. And uh, what I'm working on here currently, now that everybody has left me alone, and what I was going to do a little bit of a video on, was I'm still working on this pretty, uh, I believe this was Falkland wool, um, that I am doing on this Daglin spindle. And so I will show you a little bit of how that's going. And you can see I'm getting kind of a center pull ball happening here, which I'm excited about. And I also have a knitting project. This is my current knitting project, and I am finishing up a row here. And I, this is something I'm excited about. I wanted to have kind of a simple introduction to, uh, and it's hard to knit and look in a video at the same time. <laughs> so I'm just going to look at my hands and hope I'm aiming the camera in the right place. I wanted to have a uh, pattern that was simple but involved color work because I loved all the patterns I've seen other people doing in projects. And I wanted one where you use sock yarn, but instead of knitting just one strand at a time, you hold two strands together. And uh, that one gives you thicker yarn and two um, lets you, if you want, you can kind of mix two different colors. So you can see that, and I'm about to finish this row and I can show you better. You can see kind of from down there that that is what I am working on. So this has been my car knitting slash, uh, you know, vacation knitting project here, which is pretty brainless, which uh, is my favorite type of knitting <laughs> for many occasions, but especially uh, car knitting or vacation knitting. Here, now you can see better. So I've got, uh, you can see all my little balls. I've got the extra balls in this bag to keep them from all fighting with each other in my project bag. Um, but this was two skein, two four ounce skeins of fingering weight yarn that one of our staff members, Kelly, dyed up. And you can see they were two different colorways. And when I put them together, I thought they were just awesome. We have some pictures we've used for uh, promo images that have involved both of these together. So what I did for prep on this was I split each skein into roughly three balls each of different sizes. And I really, I didn't weigh them or think about it too hard because I wanted them all to be kind of different varying sizes. But I just generally split them into thirds. And I did the first section of this was just these two together. And um, so that was just these two together. So it was the same color, but just making it a thicker yarn. And it's also, even though they're the same color, because they're two different strands, it mixes the colors up. So, you know, like right here, you've got some of the blue and some of the pink. And uh, so it's really neat color combination even though those are the same two colors and you can see I just recently got up into here and that's what I was knitting on so gradually and that's what I like is it's not like a real drastic it went from two of the same to one of the original and then one of the new colors 
So that's what I've been knitting here. And then I'm gonna get to the middle part. So basically when this one runs out, I'm then gonna use these two, which are the same color together for like a middle section. And then I'm gradually gonna fade it out um, to where it's the same and then just ends with, so it'll kind of go from this side to that side. So I haven't quite figured it all out, but that's what I'm working on. And it's gonna be like a big rectangle, uh, yeah, kind of diagonal wrap. So you can see I got too far. But it has this little pretty double eyelet increase on one side. So that's what I'm going for is uh, it's going to be, it's going to kind of get shaped as it goes. And it is getting shaped by doing this double eyelet increase on one side. So that is my knitting project that I'm excited about. And uh, we are dying up more of these. So my idea was for more beginner knitters or somebody that hadn't really tried anything like this that we could have a uh, knit kit or group project that could go along with this. So let me know what you think. I'm excited about it. I think it's really pretty. All right, so here goes my spinning. I've got just about as much twist as I'm sitting down while I'm doing this. So I'm twisting, letting the spindle twist, and then go down by my feet. And I'm then doing the pull up, let the twist travel up like this. If I need a little bit more twist, if you need more twist, this little Scottish spindle doesn't get a tremendous amount of twist, but it's got good weight. So I get a little, load a little bit more twist on it, let it go down, and then I'm just pulling gently here. And there you go. Okay, so when you've gotten as much twist as, uh, or as much uh, yarn as you can handle at one time, what you do is you just wrap the yarn around your fingers like this until you get down to the spindle and then you just kind of have to uh, undo your slip knot which sometimes is easier than others depending on how far down you've got it but you just work the slip knot up over the end so that it's off and then take it back out of the bottom and then I like to kind of roll it where you know you're kind of going up and down up and down oh and i just broke my yarn so i'm going to keep winding this on here and you want to leave enough yarn to be able to get back up to the top so then i'm going to bring it back through the bottom and up the top make another little slip knot just like that and now you are good to go spinning again. You definitely want to keep your fiber over the top of your hand and get your twist going. And then if you're doing it in between your knees, you can park it in between your knees and then you can uh, have both hands free to let the twist travel up. Keep that out of the way. Get your twist going. You can either let it drop down to the floor, or if you feel better about put, parking it between your knees, you can definitely do that. Let's see how the twist just runs up the yarn that way. And you just continue like this, and I'll just let it drop this time. So see, I've just let it drop, I'm just ignoring it as it goes down. And you just pull from your fiber, and till you get it where you want it to be. So that's what we're working on, and uh, I will be back in my regular studio here this weekend, and um, I did want to let y'all know, we do have something exciting coming up with our next, uh, so starting this month, it was July, August, September, of the Cottage, in Cottage Industry <laughs> Yarn Bundle, which is usually a uh, kind of boutique mill spun yarn from, uh, you know, a provider, a mill, and a farm in uh, the States. This uh, three-month it's going to be actually hand spun yarn, but it's banana fiber hand spun yarn. So it's very exciting. And it's from a women's initiative out of India. 
and it helps provide them, uh, you know, these women with fair pay for jobs and something they can do, you know, with things that they have around. And it was a kind of a pet project that one of our American suppliers works with, I think it's through her church over there. And um, so I was really excited that we were, it's something we've carried before, but we've just never had it in a larger scale for like our subscription boxes. So if you are already signed up for the Cottage Industry Yarn Bundle, you'll get some cool pattern suggestions for crochet and knitting to go with the banana yarn and um, as well as some sort of special goodie that has been picked out special from Twice Your Cheap. Um, and then of course, a few skeins of the banana hand spun yarn, which is supporting that women's initiative. And if you are not signed up, well, now's a really good time to do it. <laughs> so that's what we'll be going out. And like I said, for we do it every three months, we change it out. So you only get billed once every three months and once every three months it's new. So, you know, you're always getting a new thing. But if you sign up in July, August, or September, then that's what it's gonna be. And then we will, that will go away forever and we will switch to something new for the fall. So anyhow, I will let you go. I've just been, uh, like I said, taking advantage of getting some work done. Cause I actually enjoy my work <laughs> as well as uh, some crafting time while everybody else is out and about. So I hope you're having a good week and I just wanted to say hi.